So this is the part of the video where I'd usually, you know, make a joke about subscribing to the channel, but today all of my sub buttons are, well, they are suspiciously missing. Luckily though, I do have Grandline CCTV footage, so we should be able to find the culprit. And aha, uh -huh, there you have it. The fiendish Charlotte Katakuri eating my delicious immoral subscribe buttons, which when used properly result in regular One Piece content uploaded straight into your YouTube feed. However, in this case, it simply results in chewed up soggy sub buttons. Curse you, Katakuri. Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece, and more specifically, welcome to another One Piece battle, where we take two characters from this vast series and pit them together in a hypothetical match and do our best to determine a winner as objectively as possible by examining and awarding points for the following criteria. Strength, speed, durability, haki, individual fighting styles, intelligence, devil fruits, and other miscellaneous notes. And for today, we have two incredibly powerhouse figures to examine. First up being the second son of one of the four emperors, or I guess I should more accurately say one of the three second sons, but Charlotte Katakuri is the de facto figurehead of the Big Mom Pirates, widely respected by siblings and crewmates alike, with a reputation not only for never having lost in combat, but also for being so perfect that his back has never even touched the ground. And of course, both of these myths would be dispelled when going up against a certain Monkey D. Luffy, but let's see if Katakuri can keep his win-loss ratio tight here today. Because going up against him, we have a figure known as the Heavenly Demon, with a huge list of former credits to his name, as a former World Noble, a former Warlord of the Sea, and the former King of Dressrosa, Don Quixote do Flamingo. This man also acts as the captain of the Don Quixote Pirates, or former captain, which were a notorious presence in the underworld of One Piece. And at the height of his power, he had connections and influence comparable to that of an Emperor of the Sea. Now, just like Katakuri, do Flamingo also fell victim to the dastardly straw-hatted Monkey D. Luffy, so he's also in search of some redemption here today. And with that out of the way, let us commence the battle. So let's begin with the bread and butter that is strength, and these guys both quite easily fall into the category of superhuman. Do Flamingo is somewhat difficult to assess though, because he spends most of his time in combat, making use of his Devil Fruit abilities, and really doesn't engage a lot in purely physical combat. So in the interest of fairness, we do need to examine the strength of his strengths, which are pretty damn incredible and nigh on indestructible, because even figures like Zoro and Fujitora were unable to dispel them. And not only that, but the sharpness of said strengths make them incredibly destructive and seem able to slice through anything except sea stone or something Haki imbued, but anything else, it will go through it as if it were pre-warmed butter. As for Katakuri, he's much easier to judge as an incredible powerhouse who is more than capable of dishing out anything that Luffy can. And in fact, Katakuri has been empirically proven to be overwhelmingly more powerful in every aspect that isn't Gear Fourth Bound Man, that is. However, one great measure of Katakuri's strength actually comes from his most minor attacks, which is that he has the power to casually flick a jelly bean with force greater than that of a bullet. And the fact that the tiniest movement of a minute fraction of his body can produce such a deadly force is what tips me over the edge with him in terms of the strength category, because it's a modest statement of what the rest of his godlike physique is capable of. So look, this category was closer than I thought it might be, but it will be going to Katakuri. Moving to speed, and I think the greatest indicator we have of this in regards to Katakuri is that he was not only able to keep up with, but show a superior agility to the speed of Carrot, who is pretty insanely agile, enough to get the better of Zoro in an initial confrontation anyway. Furthermore, Katakuri was also able to keep up with the Snake Man Luffy form. Meanwhile, Doflamingo is superbly agile and nimble, but the fact is that he was completely dominated by Luffy in Bound Man form, not even Snake Man. And it had a lot less to do with power than it did with speed. It was only Luffy's speed that allowed him to get in those hits and Doflamingo couldn't keep up. So naturally that is telling that he would also not be able to keep up with the speed of Katakuri, rather sadly for the Heavenly Demon, as he now sits at a score of zero to two. Now here's a very intriguing category, durability. And given the slugfest that was Luffy versus Katakuri, it would be very tempting to hand this category to the sweet commander, but I would stop and heavily question that because here's the thing about Katakuri. For 99% of that fight, it involved Katakuri slaughtering Luffy and taking next to no damage. As soon as he began taking damage, he was worn down at an incredibly quick rate. That is the curse of Katakuri. He is such a proficient and efficient fighter who focuses on not getting hit that he just isn't familiar with the concept of tanking mass amounts of damage. However, I would be remiss not to mention that he did take multiple Gear Fourth attacks and he did impale himself with his own trident, so he certainly is not to be taken lightly at all. But looking at Doflamingo, this man's durability is actually kind of absurd. This is a guy whose entire internal organs can be obliterated by an attack from Trafalgar Law, and he can just shake that off, largely in part thanks to his Devil Fruit, which provides an intriguing sense of string regeneration. And not only that, but Doflamingo also casually embraced multiple Gear Fourth attacks, and in fact, there was even an instance where Doflamingo was able to use his spiderweb defense to just flat out neutralize a Haki-infused Gear Third Punch, which is actually pretty maddening to think about. And what it took was a King Kong gun to knock him down for good. So this might be a controversial thought, but I honestly believe that in terms of sheer durability, Doflamingo Flamingo 
is your guy. All right, so Haki is a fun one because Katakuri and Dolphamingo are very rare characters in this world who can utilize observation, armament, and most importantly, conquer as Haki. So expect another epic clash of kings in that regard, but it would leave us more or less even, so we do have to move to the other aspects. And this is kind of difficult to say because Dolphamingo is one of the more top tier Haki users in the One Piece world, but then again, Katakuri is just on an entirely different level. First of all, let's pull the obvious out and point to the fact that Katakuri can use Future Sight, an invocation of observation Haki, which is a phenomenal advantage, but he's also been shown to be a far more proficient or at least creative user of armament Haki. So rather simply, if it comes down to a battle of Haki, Katakuri is cleaning up here, no worries. So now we have the funky Devil Fruit category, and rather excitingly, both of our combatants today are Awakened Paramecia users. So this is a clash unlike anything we would have seen in the series, actually, and it's hard to tell exactly how that would play out, because both Dolphamingo and Katakuri can change their environment into String and Mochi, respectively. So I don't see the concept of Awakening giving either candidate any particular advantage as a result. And that's a shame for Mr. Flamingo, because without that advantage, I think he is simply outclassed here. The main problem is that Dolphamingo is up against a special Paramecia, and Katakuri, in conjunction with Future Sight can mimic the effect of a Logia Fruit, meaning that Dolphamingo is very unlikely to ever actually hit Katakuri with a string-based attack. He'll just predict it and manipulate his body to avoid it, because if he can do it with bullets, then he can do it with string. What I will grant Dolphamingo is that his Ito Ito no Mi comes with a greater benefit of maneuverability, because it has been established that Dolphamingo can more or less use it to spy a man his way around town, which is certainly something, but this is still a bad matchup for him in terms of Devil Fruit alone, and so this is once again going to go to the beast that is Katakuri. Now let's get into a bit more depth into individual combative styles, and it's fair to say that Dolphamingo is primarily a distance fighter. He doesn't generally get up close, and he prefers to let his strings do the work, which is fine because they are stupidly powerful. So in regards to dealing with Dolphamingo, one either needs to match him in ranged combat, or be so proficient that you can get up close to him. And luckily for Katakuri, he can very much do both. He has an array of ranged options, one of which is the jelly bean flick that I've already mentioned. However, I will mostly dismiss that because it relies on a finite amount of ammo, and I don't think that the damage is such that it would have any real impact on Dolphamingo. But Kanakuri can also use his mochi to create disembodied limbs to fight him from a distance, which is a nice way to adapt his brawling style to ranged combat. And with his Devil Fruit providing an incredible immunity to strings, and even if he doesn't use it, Haki is still a thing, I feel like Katakuri is superior in terms of fighting style because he is exceptionally dangerous at both close and long range, whilst Dolphamingo is only particularly effective in a long range sense. To intelligence now, and here is where, finally, I would say that Dolphamingo does have a bit of an edge. In fact, quite possibly one of the most underrated aspects of the Heavenly Demon is his extreme proficiency in regards to psychological warfare. He has an incredible sense of how to mentally destroy opponents, and as such, he quite often won't go for moves considered the most logical or damaging, and instead, he prefers to inflict mental damage. And this is where Kandakuri may suffer greatly, because if Dolphamingo can get under even the smallest part of Katakuri's skin, then that is a huge detriment to the sweet commander. In fact, one of the reasons why Luffy was so eventually effective against Katakuri is because he inflicted a devastating amount of incidental psychological damage whilst Katakuri was pummeling him. And I can only imagine that that would be even easier to achieve with a figure who was able to dissect Katakuri and really zero in on his insecurities. And in terms of purely analytical abilities, I would also place Dolphamingo in a higher tier. This guy is a thinker and a manipulator at heart, and so much of his power comes directly from the way his mind works, that I think giving him the edge in intelligence is very well deserved. As for miscellaneous factors, one detriment I would like to point out in regards to Katakuri is that he strives to maintain an impossible standard of perfection, even in the face of heated battle. In fact, especially in the face of heated battle. This means that quite often Katakuri will become his own worst enemy, and in the face of anything he considers less than perfect about himself, he has the potential to mentally crumble. Now, I don't think that's enough to award him a disadvantage in any of the areas he's already won, because if anything, it would make him strive forward with more determination, but it does open up an opportunity to use his emotions against him and break through. Meanwhile, Dolphamingo also has an incredible detriment, which is his sheer arrogance. I will maintain until the end of my days that Dolphamingo should not have lost the conflict on Dressrosa, but he did because in key moments, he made the wrong decision, not even stopping to consider that the consequences could be anything less than completely in his favor. He is a man who has always had things go his way, and that means that he will sometimes even purposely make mistakes, even when up against an opponent, of Katakuri's level. So let's get to the conclusion, and I think it's pretty clear by now that Charlotte Katakuri has emerged victorious with an incredible five points, clearly winning in the categories of strength, speed, haki, devil fruit, and individual fighting style. Meanwhile, our runner up and or loser, Dolphamingo has had a bit of a sad time here today, only managing to pick up durability and intelligence for a total of two points. But I honestly think that's far more than much of the fan base would have expected, and I do need to emphasize that Dolphamingo is a true force to be reckoned with. He was just very unlucky being pit against one of the greatest fighters that One Piece has ever displayed. So congratulations on your win, Mr. Sweet Commander, 
Charlotte Katakuri. And that pretty much does it for this hypothetical discussion on Katakuri versus Doflamingo. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produces in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon, because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if you'd like to see more videos like this but apply to other anime and manga series, then please do feel free to check out my second channel, New World Review, for all of your wider needs. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server, where a wide array of shenanigans takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your thoughts on Katakuri versus Doflamingo as well as any other hypothetical matchups you might like to see covered on the channel. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.